Bates and Nichols as we are ready to get going. The freshman winds and his first pitch is perfect right down the heart of the plate for strike one. A little bit different of a lineup than we saw last night when these two teams faced each other over in Jacksonville as Trip McKinley will lead off and foul that one straight back. McKinley hitting the six hole yesterday. He was 0 for 3. The Ospreys only managed two hits in the entire night, an infield single and then one again in the seventh inning. 0-2 offering is down in the dirt. Yeah, Phil Potts a guy that Kevin O'Sullivan says, you know, he could end up as per perhaps if something went wrong with the first two guys as a starter, he could end up as a weekend starter at some point. Just misses below the zone there with a 91 mile an hour fastball. This freshman class of pitchers for Kevin O'Sullivan is phenomenal. Perfect game rankings all over the place. Guys with really good accolades and there is a really good start right there. Breaking ball and Trip McKinley will head back to the third base dugout for out number one. Buries the slider right here. McKinley right pulls his head right over the top but watch the head go. He's got no chance on that one. Nasty pitch. Gator pitching was really good last night in that department striking out UNF hitters. So we'll see if that stays the case again tonight. Here's Tyler Gerdeson. He'll take a fastball and miss inside. 14 strikeouts for Gator pitching last night in seven innings of work. As the Gators won 10 to nothing to get their first victory of the season. There's a good one. Change up on the outer part of the plate, and that'll even things up at one and one. A nice ride on that change up. And another good one right there. Yeah, double up on two. It. And, and Jeff, you know, the key to that changeup right there is not necessarily the change of speeds, but how that ball moves from side to side on it. The righty's working quickly. Tried to do it again, and that one down in the dirt. Blocked nicely by Tanner Garrison, the catcher, making his first start as a Gator. Garrison, the transfer from Coastal Carolina, getting the opportunity tonight to catch the youngster. Now the wind and 2-2 pitch, and that one a little up. Yeah, Gators have three catchers, Luke Heyman, Brody Denae, and Garrison. And Sully said Garrison might be the best out of three defensively all the way around. 3-2 pitch is fouled off. So we'll do it again. Yeah, Garrison, really, really good. He had a 992 fielding percentage with... 589 chances at Coastal Carolina. So he did not mess up too often down there as that one misses just below the zone. So a strikeout, but then a walk, and the Ospreys will get the first base runner of the day. And Cherokee Nichols will now hit. Nichols hit in the two hole yesterday. And had a day he would like to forget. A senior from Jackson went 0 for 3 with a hat trick. And another ball down in the dirt. And talking to Joe Mercadante about him, he says sometimes he will have a tendency to overswing Will Nichols. Well, and there you see the, the veteran presence right there already by Garrison going out. Philpott has buried several pitches, maybe just trying to overthrow, not smooth and easy. And this year, there's what there's a six total visit to the mound. Yeah. We'll see if he fixed it. He did not. And the same things happened again for ball two. Philpott wears his hat like a lefty. Normally, those lefties wear the the weird hats to the side. You don't right. see that often from right handers. You don't. And now the 2 0 is nowhere near. Throw down to second as the runner tries to go is perfect. A one hopper that kneels Jabin Bates, and the first stolen attempt against Tanner Garrison is gunned down for out number two. I don't like when you look in like that. It slows you down. Well, and he looked in for a long time as well. So we'll see if Philpot can come back. 
And, and I'll tell you this, there was no way that was a hit and run. That's the only time you should possibly look in is the hit and run, but he's not running hit and run on the 2-0. Well, back to back fastballs to get Phil Pod back in the count. Nichols thought it was below the zone, so he was ready to trot down to first base. And now he stands in there for the payoff pitch. And it is hit out towards center. Robertson a few steps back, and now in his glove for out number three. So, Phil Pod faces the minimum, and we will head to the bottom of the this guy. Thought he had a career high day yesterday in Jacksonville as Kate Curlin originally had four hits, but a box score change late last night changed one of his hits to an error by the third baseman. So Curlin with a three hit night as he steps in the box and takes a breaking ball for strike one. And that was post getting on the bus, huh? Yeah. Wow. Post uh, a lot of things, post a lot of people talking about it and saying it was a career high. Story written about it. And a good fastball there at the knees at 86 for strike two. So Curlin now four for 10 on the year. But seemed to really like that leadoff spot yesterday. And he'll go the other way with this one, a sinking line drive, but it'll hang long enough for Cherokee Nichols to run over and make the catch for out number one. Well, good job by Avery Love. That's what you got to do. You got to get ahead. And that's certainly something that did not happen yesterday for the UNF pitchers. A lot of deep counts early on in that game when the Gators were able to put up some runs. Jack Caglione hit a deep ball yesterday as he fouls off a first pitch breaking ball here. It cleared the right field wall by a ton, his first homer of 2024. And this is the first time on a TV broadcast we have seen Jack hitting in the two hole. Yeah. So this is this is new. He did it last night, very successful. As I mentioned, hit his first home run of the year in the first inning. Gets a fastball there, and it's just off the plate at 88. And that has become in vogue, not not only in college, but in Major League Baseball. Sure. Get your better hitter up early, like an Aaron Judge, stuff like that. You see that just more at bats through the course of a year, especially if you have the guys behind them that can protect them. Yep. 1-1 one, one good change up there for strike two. And I think when, when you look at it, it obviously makes sense because gone are the days of when you dominated the base stealing world and Ricky Henderson and right. all those types of people, you just you'd rather get somebody up now with. They could leave the yard and they're yeah. gonna, over a course of a year, you know, it's it's going to give them X amount of at bats in crucial situations to win a ball game. Sure. Well, and then you're also seeing with Cags early on here, he's already walked three times in well, two games when he only walked 17 times a year ago. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm predicting at least 50 walks this year from him. And that's where, again, the importance of the guys behind him and Heyman and Shelton trying to protect. 2-2 two -two pitch is high on a changeup for ball three. Yeah, they don't want to mess with him. They know what happened last night. That ball he hit to right field in the first inning, that got out of there in a split second. It was incredible. The shift is on, just like Everybody has done against Cags over the last couple of years. 3 2 pitch, change up hit sharply, but right where the second baseman was playing, and that will be an easy 4 3 put out for out number two. Well, good job again by Avery Love. Didn't give in. Fastball through the change up in there and got Cags to ground out. Joe Mercadante would love to see his pitcher get out of this inning in less than 15 pitches. Because last night his starter had a 43 pitch first inning. And didn't make it out of the first inning. Faced seven hitters and he was pulled. So Luke Kamen will step in there. He takes first pitch just off the plate. And now a good slider to even things up at a ball and a strike. Heyman had a good day yesterday, two for three, drove in a couple of runs. Both of his hits, line drives in between short and third, and they'll prevent that here by Shifton. 
as Heyman fouls off a slider. And there you see the three guys on the left side of the infield. And remember, in the big league ball now, you can't do that anymore. Yeah. But in college, you can. And in unlimited throws to first base on pickoff attempts, still in vogue in college ball. One, two misses in, another off speed pitch. So just 13 pitches so far for Avery Love, and his 14th is a little bit low again. So back to back full counts. And we'll see if we can get out of this one. He'll check out that wrist. And they have the sign for the 3 2, and it is chopped foul, so we'll do it again. Mike Petrowski, the pitching coach for UNF, did a really good job at Ryder. He, of course, in his first season, as is Joe Mercadante and Tyler Holt, the Gainesville native and former Florida State Seminole. Really good coaching staff that Joe has put together. 3-2 is off the plate. Tried to throw him the slider, and that one missed. So the Gators will have a two-out walk. Oh, the old two-out walk. Never a good thing. We talked about it. The Gators were bitten by it against St. John's on opening night. And there you see both Petrowski and Joe Mercadante. It was a two out hit by pitch, but yep. you get the idea. It was a freebie. The staff's got a, a lot of success amongst big time baseball, coaching in the ACC over the years as Colby Shelton steps in and takes a fastball at the knees for strike one. And got to be a thrill for. Joe to be back here in Gainesville. Yeah, and grew that, up here. Yeah, and father son Gators as players. Yeah. Dad Steve played for the Gators. Oh, one change up is fouled off. Shelton that great year last year in Alabama, 25 homers, 51 runs driven in. He's a Florida native. Just decided to go elsewhere. And then he came back to his home state. After an All-American freshman year, 0-2 is chopped right to the first baseman. It's bobbled, though, by Bush, and nobody's going to be able to make a play. Love tried to get over there and scoop it up, and he couldn't. And what should have been the end of the inning gives the Gators new life. Two on and two out for Shellnut. Yeah, got him to swing over that ball right there, roll over it, just clanked off the glove, and that's when the fun ensued. Well, and just really one of those where he didn't have to charge that ball at all. No. If he stays right there on the bag, it takes one extra hop, and his foot's already on the bag. Got a little aggressive there when he didn't need to. No, it, it, that one there, you just let it come to you, you catch it, and just, just move over to your left. Yep. So we'll see what Shellnut can do with two outs, and he'll get a slider that misses off the plate for ball one. Still not off to a good start. Gets a change up and he will take it below the zone. Shell not last night a good night. He had a couple of hits. Four different Gators had multiple hits. And the 2 0 pitch is a swing and a miss. And UNF did that a lot last night uh, against this offense. You would think. 2-0 counts, 3-1 counts, you'd see fastballs, but did a really good job of mixing it up and pitching backwards. So I think the Gators have to expect that tonight, knowing they're not going to see a lot of fastballs in at least the counts you think you'd see one. And that's where he wants to keep that pitch there, knee high or just a little below that. Yeah, didn't get the call from John Bennett, the home plate umpire. So Shellnut now in the driver's seat. Awaits a 3-1, and that one will miss down low. So there, that two-out walk has turned this into bags full of blue jerseys and a chance for the Gators to get some runs here early on. You can see the grit in the look of Joe Mercadante as he wrote down another base on balls. This inning started 
innocently enough. Fly ball, ground out to two preseason All-American hitters, and then a walk. Ty Evans, very aggressive lines, went into left field. One run will score. Shelton around third, head for home. He's a brown-eyed, handsome man. And just like that, a two-out walk ends up with two runs as number two hits a 2B. And Ty Evans, uh, welcome back. He, he's played uh, last night, the first game of the season. Was Durson a little bit of a, what, a hand injury? And his bat is going to be so important this year, especially protecting the hitters in front of him. And we saw what that kid could do last year. He could hit with power. He could hit clutch. There's all kind of things Ty Evans can bring to this offense. If five home runs in the College World Series a year ago for Ty Evans, nobody in the history of the College World Series had ever done that, which is just nuts to think about. He had more homers in Omaha than he did the entire year. You see the uh, the tape on his wrist there. That little hand injury late in the preseason as Dale Thomas is in there fouling this one off. That should reach the seats down the right field line and does. But Ty did not play in the opener on Friday. So got his first action yesterday. Ended up going one for four, but Kevin O'Sullivan was very happy with the, ball the four hard. ABs. Hit yeah. it hard every single time. Yeah. And certainly we saw that right there from Ty. I mean, Ty Evans is a dynamic player on this ball club. I'm sure Sully's happy to have him back. And that gives him other options with his lineup. The fastball to Dale Thomas way off the plate. And when you lose a guy like Wyatt Langford, you certainly don't expect no. a, a Ty Evans to, to make up for those numbers. But if he can be the same type of guy he was towards the end of the year, you're going to get a lot of that. As that one misses inside to even up the count of two and two. You lose a Wyatt Langford, one of the better hitters ever to grace the University of Florida baseball program. And you get a guy like Colby Shelton to come yeah. over from Alabama. That filled a big power void. That one just off the plate on a fastball. So another full count. And seven hitters now for the Gators. You know, Langford hit 21 home runs a year ago because he missed a lot because of an injury. Yep. But if you plug in 25 to replace it. 3 2 to Dale is a slow roller to third, picked up by Clements. His throw on the run is in time, and that will do it for the bottom of inning number one. But a two out walk, and then an error, another walk, two RBI single by Ty Evans gives the Gators as we go to the second, a 2 nothing lead. Chillier, but a beautiful sunset as you see that Gator Orange beyond the third base dugout of the Condren family ballpark. We get going in inning number two as Jacob Runnels will step in there against Alex Philpot. Philpot threw 18 pitches in inning number one. Strike out and a walk, but he only faced three guys as he throws strike two. Good 91 mile an hour fastball there. Runnels the DH. Hit in the three hole yesterday was 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Here's a chopper to short. Should be easy for Shelton. And it is for out number one. Yeah, got him to roll over the off speed. Shelton been pretty reliable at shortstop. Of course, the Gators losing Josh Rivera, one of the better shortstops to come to campus in the history of the program. Yeah, it's weird not to see a Josh Rivera out there. He was a staple at short for so many years. Since uh, 20. Yeah. yeah. And out Kate Bush, another righty, and he can't handle that slider for strike one. Bush was a cleanup man yesterday, 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. It's from Palm Beach. Takes a slider there. And then went to Florida State out of high school before transferring and being a part of Joe Mercadante's first team and they should have some good connections with Tyler Holt on the staff. Yeah, Mercadante likes his ability to hit to all fields. He calls him a pure hitter. Two years of ACC experience as you mentioned. 
And Phil Pot will miss. So just like the first inning, Phil Pot got the first out, but then walked the next guy. And that's the second of the day. He's missing, but he's missing down, which is certainly a good thing. But at some point, got to make an adjustment and bring it up just to Tad. Here's Matthew Clements. And that one is down as well on a first pitch slider. Garrison's doing a nice job early on in this ball game blocking balls. That's a much better slider and that'll even things up at one and one. Yeah, he should just go after the hitter here the runner at first base. Yeah, not going he, anywhere. He's got a bad lead and he's on his heels, so he's going to get a bad jump if he goes anyway. Clemens from Jacksonville Beach will take that one down low. Philpott did not walk a lot in high school, just 33 walks. You'll see right here, when he gets his lead, you can see there's no separation between his heels and the ground, so that he's going to have to lift that up and lose a tenth of a second right from the start. That one hit hard, but foul. On a fastball right out over the heart of the plate. You only have about 3.35 seconds to steal second base from the pitcher's first move. So, wasted motion you cannot have over there. Two two pitch grounder back up the middle and that'll sneak through. So Clements gets a slider and steers it right back where it came from and the Ospreys in business with a couple on here in the second. So we've seen now on both sides walks turning into damage. And you can't feel that bad about what happened right there because he did entice a ground ball that could have been a double play if Shelton was a little over more to his left. So Tyler Gerdeson will now hit. And he'll take one down to the zone. And Kevin O'Sullivan wants to come out and have a chat with his freshman pitcher. Phil Powell was ranked the 12th best right-handed pitcher and the 37th overall player in the state of Florida by perfect game as a senior. Gators had Liam Peterson, of course, go yesterday. He was ranked the eighth best right-handed pitcher nationally and the third best right-handed pitcher in the state of Florida. So you can see that Kevin O'Sullivan found a lot of good ones by not having to go out of state. Liam Peterson's slider is for real. Yeah, it was legit. We'll see if the chat worked, and at least did on that pitch, as that one is at the <laughs> knees to even things up at a ball and a strike. I'm glad to see things stay constant. Every time Sully goes out to the mound, <laughs> comes back in, first pitch, strike. Curtison was 0 for 3 yesterday as he takes a slider for strike two. Did not strike out though. He was one of just two guys in the Osprey lineup well, that didn't strike out. He's got to have a good two strike approach here. You start looking away and go from there. A one two offering hit hard down the first base line. Cags knocks it down. He'll flip to a covering Alex Philpot and that saved a double and potentially a run with a nice play by the Gator first baseman. Yes it did. That's not a good two strike pitch and Cax bailed him out. Sees a lot of the plate right there and gets a good swing on it. Leaves his feet and that's the thing too. With a first baseman, bit, when you have to leave your feet and come back, you got to dig in your glove to get it cleanly. And those first baseman's mitts are huge. And for a guy like Jack Caglione, it's probably even bigger. And he made a really nice play going to his right yesterday. So it shows you the range and how good of a first baseman he's really become over there. I think it might be very easy to say, hey, we just want Jack to be the DH. Yeah. We don't want him playing the field, but they know how important he is defensively. 1-1 one, one pitch will miss. Yeah, we've seen him do a nice job scooping balls out of the dirt. 
And he's still got some dirt in that glove. Hey, look, he's a good athlete. Let's face it. I mean, a guy does what he does, pitches, hits. Good breaking ball there. And that'll leave it up the count of two and two to Drew Leinenbach. Leinenbach was a leadoff man yesterday, so he gets dropped to the eight hole today. The junior from Dinellen struck out a couple of times, and Alex Philpott will try to get one of those here. The 2 2 pitch, and he got him. Good slider there from the freshman. And despite the walk and the single, he puts a zero.
Top of the third here in Gainesville. Back to action quickly as this one is flown out to right center field. A sinking line drive, and Robertson won't be able to run it down. Alex Rodriguez, who did not play yesterday, gets the at bat, and the junior gets himself a base hit. Shortstop named Alex Rodriguez. I like it. His second hit of the year. Goes with this pitch. Pitches up, outer third. He's coming off a of hand surgery. Yeah, didn't try to do too much with that. Just steered it into right field. And now back to the top of the order as Trip McKinley steps in there. Tanner Garrison wants another word with his freshman. Do you think it's added pressure if you're a shortstop and your name is Alex Rodriguez? I would think so. If I, if I was a catcher and my name was Johnny Bench, I think it'd be added Tough pressure. to live up to. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'd, well, I guess you can't really make the decision when you're five or six. That's right. Because your parents will think it's a good idea to do that. He's A-Rod to his teammates, right? Yeah. There you go. This well, is obviously coming from the dugout. Gators have a righty starting to get loose now. Trying to buy some time here. Ideally, talking to Sully about last night's game, Liam Peterson was only supposed to go to, but he's breezing. So they let him out for the third inning. Three innings and only 37 pitches. Yeah, very effective, especially to do that with seven strikeouts shows you how many strikes he actually threw. Yeah, and the lack of lack of balls and that's the thing when you don't throw balls and you're striking out people the pitch count could get low that one's popped a mile high in the shallow right field curling out Evans in and it will be the right fielder to haul it in for out number one so good job by Tanner Garrison the catcher there he settled down Phil Pot who's up to 45 pitches now Bill Pot on Friday night came in and threw an inning and two thirds with a couple of strikeouts, a couple of walks. Exactly what he has tonight. Two strikeouts and two walks. And the freshman just misses down low to Jabin Bates. Bates walked his first time up. Left handed hitting catcher. Takes that one for a strike. I guess that's becoming more and more of a thing. Left-handed hitting catchers. Crash oh, Davis yeah. was one. Oh, yeah. BT Ryapel, of course. Yeah, left-handed hitting catchers. Adley yeah. Rutschman. Yep. Mike Zanino is going to be in the house on Sunday. Nice. Former Gator catcher. And... One of the best to ever do it. This one right at Cags. He'll step on the bag, try to go to second, and he does perfectly. It's like he was on the mound throwing a strike, and he fired it right to the chest of Shelton to retire the side. So you got the one or three unassisted six double play to end things. So the leadoff base hit, but looking forward to a good year and looking forward to this appearance as UNF has gone to the mound. Zane Starling, freshman. From just up the road, Santa Fe High School, Lake City, Florida. Will get an opportunity to face the Gators. And the first pitch to Tyler Shellnut, also a Lake City native, is just off the plate for ball one. Yeah, how about that? The Battle of Lake City, Starling, 89 to 91. Yeah, these Fast guys. ball has that little funk to his delivery. It's that crossfire action. Yeah. And a little special for me because I was. Uh, Zane's pitching coach basically the last four years. You put pressure on yourself playing right Gator now. ball. Yeah, that's, that's a strike right there. <laughs> <laughs> Just off the plate to shell nut. Okay, coach. Yeah. But yeah, Zane's just one of those guys that you love to coach because he competes more than anything. And that one's right over there, 91 miles an hour. Zane's put on a lot of a lot of weight, about 20 pounds so far, getting over to Jacksonville. Really good breaking ball. And the 3-1 pitch is strike two. Good fastball on the outer part of the plate. A lot of family in town for Zane tonight, as you would expect, and 
all of his teammates from Santa Fe High School have come to the game tonight too. Big pitch here. 3-2 offering is just below the knees with some run. And it'll be a leadoff walk to start off the bottom of the third for the Gators. Second time that Shell Not has walked tonight. Starling has only thrown to one hitter so far this year. He struck him out. And now he'll face Ty Evans. Ty with a big two out RBI single that drove in a couple of runs to get the Gators on the board in the first inning. He's been really aggressive these last two games, attacking pitches early in the count. They'll lay off a slider there for ball one. Evan, such a dangerous hitter. Quick hands. Can see the ball deep before he makes his decision. That's a slider just off the plate and yeah. quickly Mike Petrowski wants to have a conversation. Yeah, just just calm him down. Good slider, just like you said, off the plate, but it had a nice sweeping action to it. He's got those leather strings hanging off his glove. Do they have those when you put he with you? No, I, I wouldn't allow that. And you see how the leather strings are hanging? That was in vogue when Skip Burtman was coached, like Ben McDonald and those guys. Yeah, a lot of those. They all had, yeah. Swishing around. Yeah, I think to me it would be annoying to have it flopping. Just a distraction. 2 0 pitch is a little bit low for ball three. There you're talking about. There's a good fastball. At the knees on the outer part of the plate. So Evans now two for five on the year. Hit two deep fly balls to the warning track in right field yesterday. Runner goes and this one is out that way again right center field. And it is going to be caught. That is a heck of a play by Drew Leinenbach sliding and the throw back to first. They got him. Shelnut was all the way around second base, so he had to step on the bag and come back. And then Leinenbach fired it in. He came out of nowhere at the very end. And that is a huge double play right there to get a couple of outs here in the bottom of the third inning. That's a top 10 nominee right there. Look at this play. And, and I love the slide just to get his momentum. Gets up and knows exactly where he's got to go with it. And then at the back end of that play, Kate Bush does the nonchalant as if it's not coming, basically a decoy as if the ball wasn't coming to get Shonut to perhaps not slide a little more to the right to avoid the tag. That man right there made one of the better plays you'll see this season. Yeah, just at the very last second. And Nichols, the right fielder, just came in, in front of the ball. So obviously there was some communication there. Leinenbach saying that he had it as Nickel bailed out of the way. Dale Thomas the hitter heading the count 2 and 0 oh, and now a grounder to short with the shift on that is fielded and fired over nicely. So despite the leadoff walk give you a tough left on left matchup with that windup he has Yeah, a little funk to it and this one has popped down the right field line Caglione giving chase and how about that Willie Mays catch. Well, we talked about his athleticism diving before, and now he stands up, catches it, and falls to the ground for out number one. Well, it wasn't Vic Wirtz that hit that ball. It was Cherokee Nichols, but you could see right here, Cags with his third good play defensively of this ball game. Outstanding. So one pitch, one out, and now Jacob Runnels will step in there. And he takes ball one and now ball two. Satin from Plant High School has been a lot of really good Gators to come out of Plant High School. 
And he just misses with that fastball for ball three. Gets one at the knees there for strike one. Runnels is their best guy they want up there with runners in scoring position, but that has not been uh, something they've been able to do against Gator pitching. Well, he's going to get on, at least with a base hit, line drive right over the shortstop's head. It's not his fault nobody's on. No. So third hit of the day for the Ospreys. You got to be careful here too, because you got a guy in Cade Bush, experienced hitter. Don't want to make a mistake to him. So right now it's three to nothing, but you groove one here. It's a one-run ball game. Yeah, Bush walked his first time up, but certainly has the pop to make it that one-run ball game as he takes fastball for a strike. And zero need to worry about the runner at first. What a capital Z. Yeah, he's just two steps off the bag and another good one at the knees for strike two. This is short, Lee. This is saying, trust me, I'm not going. <laughs> With a big smile on his face as he gets his lead. Satin ranked the 15th best left-handed pitcher in the state of Florida by perfect game coming out of high school last year. His one two is lined in the center again. So back to back singles by Runnels and Bush. And for just the second time tonight, the Ospreys have a runner in scoring position. Yeah, they're two veteran guys deliver with singles. Pitch is left up. Satin knew it. You see the expression on his face as the ball went whizzing over his head. And now you got to settle down and get these last two outs. Matthew Clements now to the dish. And the righty takes one high for ball one. It's the guy Joe Mercadante says he's hit a lot of doubles. Oh, Kevin O'Sullivan out to the mound. He wants to have a conversation with his freshman. And you, you look at Satin at Plant High School. Struck out 175 guys with just 26 walks and about 150 in innings in his high school career. Never lost as a senior. 8-0, or excuse me, eight complete games as he went 11-0. Tyler Holt. Wants to have a conversation now with Clements. You know, playing high school, you talked about playing high school. You know, Pete Alonzo, Wade Box. Let's start with those two. Yeah. Preston Tucker, Kyle Tucker. Not too shabby right there. Yeah. One-0 -oh pitch to Clements is off the plate for ball two. And you know, I think uh, so many people talk about all the the different Gator greats, but when you look at the numbers that Preston Tucker put up in four years, mm -hmm. it's right there the maybe the best of any. 2-0 pitch is a swing and a miss. Kyle Tucker was supposed to come to Gainesville, but he never made it. Yeah, getting drafted as high as he did. Very high. And now he's winning World Series rings all the time. 2-1 pitch is a good one. Fastball on the inner part of the plate. I remember them saying everything. Kyle might be better than Preston. I'm going, how is that possible? No. After watching Preston Tucker play his career at Florida and get to the big leagues pretty quick. 2 2 pitch. Got him. Chased a high fastball, but whatever Kevin O'Sullivan said certainly worked for the freshman, and he'll get the second out of the inning and his first career Gator strikeout. 87, but above the hands. You're not going to catch up with pitches above the hands. So now a left on left matchup as Tyler Gerdeson steps in and he'll take a floater in there for strike one and 
North Florida really needs to break the seal. They haven't scored in two nights, and this is a big opportunity for them in this ball game. Comebacker, though, right back to the freshman, and the underhand toss to Caglione will retire the side. So despite a couple of singles, Robert Satin hangs a zero up on the scoreboard, and we'll go to the bottom of the floor. We're up 4-0. Florida scored in all but one inning. Six of the seven in yesterday's game as Zane Sterling gets back to work and misses up and off the plate to Tanner Garrison. The catcher getting his first start in a Gator uniform. Gets a breaking ball, hits it hard, and that will be off of the glove on the back end of an attempt by Clemens. So the first hit of Tanner Garrison's Gator career is a double down the left field line. And it's a good start to the bottom of the fourth for Florida. The Gators have kind of an embarrassment of riches for catchers. You know, Tanner Garrison just took this pitch up and just rode it right down the line. There's Luke Heyman, Brody Denae. Gets the so that'll get Michael Robertson to the plate. UNF expecting a bunt as first and third basemen are in on the grass. Robertson does square and it'll take a fastball down low for ball one. See Chuck Geralman in the background there handling the offensive signs. Robertson went against the shift his last time up single into left field. He try it again, but he got jammed and will foul it off for strike one. A whole left side open again for Robertson. He's now four for nine on the young season. 444 average. Something that he's really worked hard on was his offense. As that slider just misses off the plate. And that's that's the interesting thing to me. You're giving him the entire left side yep. and you're pitching him off the plate away. Yep. Making it easy for him to just steer one that way. I mean, you might as well take everybody off the field then. If you can do that. That one misses again for ball three. This, he loses Robertson here. This could be a big crooked number coming. Because now you got Murderer's Row coming up after. 3 1 fastball is laced out in the left center field. That ball's down. And Garrison will be held up. Robertson trying to get to second. And he's going to be thrown out. That's a great job on the cutoff right there as the first baseman. Kate Bush came over, got himself in a good position. And Robertson got too aggressive and is thrown out for the first out of the inning. Well, let me tell you, there's he's aggressive on that, and I like the aggressiveness. I'm going to tip my cap to, to uh, North Florida on making this play. Of course, you'll see the cutoff right here, and then they recognize what Robertson's doing. And if they're not aware. Yeah. Curlin takes the first pitch breaking ball. He'll line it into left, and Garrison will come in to score this time. So Curlin stays hot against the Ospreys. And the Gators get a run here on the Curlin RBI single. You know me, I'm not going to get on guys being aggressive on the base, especially when you have a lead. Oh, yeah. That's the time to be aggressive. Oh, and it took a perfect throw. Ah, that was a great defensive great play. Great execution. Absolutely. Curlin doing his thing. One of the best years as second baseman at Florida in quite some time. Caglione will hit one right into the shift and right where the shortstop was playing. So he'll get thrown out as Alex Rodriguez was out into shallow right field. And that will be out number two in the inning. 2000, 2017, the magic year. Yep. Who was our second baseman? See? Um, See a lot I, of people. No, I know who it is. Okay. It'll just take me a second. Luke Heyman comes to the plate. And he will take strike one. Gosh. Can picture him. Why can't I think of his name? 
and he was he really his numbers aren't saying he had an unbelievable year but he really was a big part of that season. Yeah he did not hit well at all left handed hitter. Yep. Gosh. Starts with an L. Ends with a T. Lip lick it lip it. There Deacon you. lip it. Uh -huh. There you go. Good job. Well but but lip it turned a double play well. Yeah. I mean I mean he, he had it, you know, the double play combination that year was spectacular. Heyman's got the advantage in the count, two balls and a strike. Heyman looking for his first hit today. He has walked and popped up. He'll take that one high and tight for ball three. Yeah, Nick Horvath in center field, mm -hmm. not the flashiest guy in the world. Didn't really hit a lick, but Kevin O'Sullivan put the right guys out there on defense, and that team could certainly pitch. 3 1 just misses inside, and Heyman will trot down to first via the walk for the second time tonight. Well, Starling's had his defense bail him out a few times tonight. One on the great catch in center. Started by Leinenbach. And then the good play on the cutoff just a couple hitters ago. Ospreys will shift again for Shelton as he steps in there, and he'll take a backdoor slider in there for strike one. And every team is different with how they shift. Ospreys choose to take the shortstop and put him into shallow right field as opposed to the second baseman. 0 1. Got him. Nipped him. Mm -hmm. Starling tried to come in and got a little too far in. And that will load the bases now for Tyler Shelna. Another, this is the Lake City battle. Yep. Joe Mercadante is asking to see if that really hit the hitter. I thought I heard it. Yeah, you could you could hear the nip. This is numbers a year ago. Of course, this year he pitched against Delaware first weekend, only went a third of an inning, gave up two hits. But the run he gave up was unearned. 88 to 90 mile an hour guy. Fastball that rides. Has an ability to elevate that pitch. Shelnut has walked twice tonight, but he's hacking on a first pitch fastball there and fouls it back for strike one. Shelnut two hits yesterday. They shift on him as well, so a lot of room to the right side as that fastball misses off the plate. Now, this is a big at bat in this ball game because Gators could blow this thing wide open. Shelnut three for nine on the year. He's only driven in one. Gets a slider and pulls it through the left side and the shift. One run will score. Here comes Heyman. He will score. And yet again, the Gators with some two out damage as Tyler Shelnut hits one hard and gives the Gators two more. And it's now 6 nothing for the boys wearing blue tonight. You know, there's a guy like Tyler Shelnut as he takes a hanging breaking ball, strokes it through the left side. It kind of gets unnoticed in some of these big, powerful Gator lineups, but this guy is a big part of it. He's a guy that has double home run power at any given time. Just a good hitter. So the eighth man to bat this inning is Ty Evans. Cross up. Sure looked like one. Gators have been really good with two outs tonight, including this guy's first at bat. Two out, two RBI single back in the first inning. Yeah, that fastball is down. This is getting dangerous here because a guy like Ty Evans. We've seen him home run to all fields. He's got that kind of power. 
He almost left the yard and let right center. His last at bat. Back off the bat, it looked like it was gone if, yeah. it, if the wind didn't hold it down. Good breaking ball there, and it's back to that pattern of pitching backwards, not giving in. Yeah, and as a hitter, 2 0, you're not sitting on a breaking ball. No. Good fastball there as it's by Evans to even up the count at two and two. They don't shift on Evans. The Ospreys have shifted on just about every Gator hitter. Well, he does hit them in all fields, that's for sure. He'd be a tough guy to shift on. Gonna go up the ladder here. And Evans lays off of it. So the runners will get the automatic head start, 3-2. Two outs. And they'll have to go back as we do it again. Shelton at second, Shelton not at first. The shell game. Yeah. There they go again on the 3 2, and that one is all the way to the backstop. So Evans will walk, and now it'll be Dale Thomas's turn with the bases loaded. Ninth hitter to plate this inning. Thomas hitless tonight. He's grounded to third and grounded to short. In the two games now, Gators have outscored UNF 16 to nothing. And the Gators have scored in nine of the 11 innings. So the offense has certainly been good as that slider catches the outer part of the plate for a strike. They will shift with Thomas at the plate. And that fastball will just miss. And it missed away. Yeah, yet they continue to pitch away. Mm -hmm. With the shift on. So Thomas again doesn't need to try to do too much here. Just take one of those outside pitches and hit it where they ain't. And he does have home run power. He's able to square one up. Little miss for ball two. Another righty in the bullpen for UNF. A chilly night. Borowski's sweating. And that's going to be a block. He can't do that. Through to an occupied base. There's your ball. Can't throw it to an unoccupied base. That was the case there. Easy ball call. That's unnerving, you know, coach seeing that. Pitcher trying to do that as opposed to trying to get the hitter. It's going to work, you know, got a question where his head's at here. Yeah, you got to worry about what's at the plate. And the 2 1 is hit hard right into the shift, though. And Rodriguez will throw across in time to retire the side. So the Gators put up a big crooked number. Kate Curlin gets it going with an RBI single. Tyler Shellnut adds a couple more. And then the Bach brings in the seventh run of the game for the Gators. We head to the fifth, 7 0. It's right at the pitcher. But I appreciate what he was trying to do. The Third baseman playing deep. So now Alex Rodriguez, who singled in the right center his first time up, will take that one high and off the plate. And when you're trying to bunt on a left handed pitch, you really got to get a little more down the line. Just the fact that the lefty's falling off to that side to begin with. Yeah. 
There's a good fastball. Rodriguez did not play in the game yesterday. He started off his season one for six in the doubleheader to open up the season with three strikeouts. But better tonight. But Satin not giving him something to hit here. Yeah. No time to nibble. Seven run lead. But he does and walks the nine hole hitter. So Kevin O'Sullivan not going to be happy with that. That's the third walk for Gator pitching tonight. Two by the freshman Alex Philpott. And these are growing pains. You have to. Expect when you have freshmen out there. Oh, Trip McKinley back to the plate and he'll pop one straight up. Dale Thomas will get Satin out of the way and catch it for out number two. Well, that's a nice bounce back after walking the nine hole hitter. Getting out in one pitch. So we had Phil Pot with a sideways hat. We've got Satin with the flat bill. See that was something that never would have happened because the second you got a baseball hat back in the day Curved you started it. forming it yeah. right yeah. absolutely Jabin Bates the hitter will take a breaking ball in for ball one. Yeah, I just don't see how that would be cool maybe he was a, he's a skater well, it's Tony Hawk board. See that thing on documentary they did on him. It's fantastic. Well, it's amazing what he can do. Good fastball there for strike two. Bates looking for his first hit tonight. Walked his first time and then grounded into a double play. He'll just chop this one to Curlin. He'll wait on it. And fire over to Caglione to retire the side. So five scoreless by Gator pitching tonight. A couple of freshmen doing the work, and we are halfway home in Gainesville to the bottom of the fifth. It's seven nothing Florida. Have all three of the weekend games against Columbia for you on ESPN Plus. The Lions will be here. Tanner Garrison swings at a first pitch fastball. And misses it. And Sunday's game, an early one, a little unorthodox schedule. Yeah, 11, right? Yeah, six on Saturday and then 11 on Sunday. As Garrison takes that one off the plate. Well, he missed a lot. Dude. They're showing going up the ladder. Garrison, third time in this ball game, he has let off an inning. And he let off well the last time, doubling down the left field line. Able to check his swing there and stay ahead in the count. Maybe he should be the leadoff hitter. The Gators have scored in both <laughs> of those right. innings that he's let off. Getting his first start as a Gator. Brody Donay getting his first day off. Good breaking ball there to even up the count at two and two. Now is when you. Uh, Trust an elevated fastball, you do it here. Missed below the knees with that one. And that's where they were supposed to throw it. Well, oh. to where they set up, but his ability to elevate is one of his uh, strengths. That one's popped a mile high on the right side of the infield. McKinley. Right on the edge of the dirt. We'll call it in for out number one. So now Michael Robertson. The Ospreys have shifted twice with him up there. And two at bats, Robertson has hit it to the left of second base. So I'm not sure I'd shift again. 
But a good fastball there, maybe Borowski's best for strike one. Well, they continue in those at bats to pitch him away as well. Good breaking ball there. So maybe the two best pitches that Borowski has thrown back to back put Roberts in a no two hole. Let's see if he comes right back with the same pitch. Pressure on the catcher. Bates to block it. Elevated fastball and Robertson is retired very quickly. Just the second Gator to strike out tonight. And that's two quick outs here in the fifth. Yeah, and that's the, that's the pitch I thought he was going to throw 2-2 two, two to uh, Garrison because his ability to elevate the fastball net. That, that was a setup pitch prior to the breaking ball in the dirt. Then they came back up with the elevated fastball changing the eye level. Yeah, that was a really good sequence. Yeah, it was. Borowski starting to figure it out. And he'll face the top of the order in Kate Curlin with another good slider for strike one. Curlin likes the Ospreys. He's got four hits in two days. Blew an RBI single his last time as he takes this one down low. Freshman All-American by four different publications. First team All-SEC a year ago. Had five letters in high school as he played on varsity as an eighth grader at Berkeley Prep. 1-1 one, one pitch floats in there for strike two. School's all-time leader in hits, runs, stolen bases, and homers in high school. I wonder if he's going to make the Hall of Fame someday. 1-2 pitch is high and tight. He's got one of his Berkeley Prep teammates coming in to face him this weekend. Yeah. He's playing for Columbia. How about that? Pitcher, yeah. So that'll be a fun matchup when it happens. Two balls and two strikes, and that one just off the plate. Curlin played in 68 games last year of the 71. And the Gators had 54 wins a year ago for Florida, as this one is blooped down the right field line. That's going to be a tough play, and nobody's going to get it, but it falls foul, so we'll do it again. So out of all the teams in Gator baseball history, more than 100 years, last year's team won more than any other, but fell one game shy of their second national title. Yeah, his teammate, Will Parkinson, was a teammate of his in high school. Okay. From Berkeley Prep, junior left-handed pitcher. See him this weekend. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. And those two probably never thought They'd ever face each other at the collegiate level. So another 3 2 pitch coming, and that one's fouled off again. This one, a souvenir into the seats, about 10 rows up. And you know, Borowski would like to get this out because lurking is tr trouble. I think you think Kate Kerwin's trouble. Yep. Gators have only sent the minimum to the plate once. That was Starling's third inning, where he got a double play and a ground out. They haven't had an official one, two, three inning yet. But they'll get it now as Borowski blows the fastball by him. So a really big inning for the righty as he gets a pop up and a couple of strikeouts. And for just the second time tonight, the Gators hang a zero. We go to the six at seven, nothing Florida. UNF Ospreys tonight and they'll try to do it with another freshman as Hunter Jones will keep on the Condren family ballpark mound for the first time. Yeah making his debut the walk on Hunter Jones as he comes on to George Thorogood's bad to the bone. Fastball 90 92 slider and change. Very athletic pitcher. So he loves because this guy could really field his position. From just down the road, North Marion. So 
You know, George Thorogood had a semi-pro baseball team with the Delaware Destroyers. Really? A big baseball team. Jones will face Cherokee Nichols and get a 91 fastball in there at the knees for strike one. Three, four, and five in the order for UNF. They've yet to score in now 12 innings against Gator pitching. Oh, my. Big sweep and slider, and it's off the plate. Now the 1-1, one -one, and that ball is smoke, but foul. Onto the berm down the left field line. That'll rattle around, and we'll see what kid ends up with it. Here's your winner. They couldn't see him. He's wearing camo. Yeah. That's how he was able to sneak in there. One two pitch. That slider misses again. And that'll even things up at two and two. He needs to start that slider a little bit more over the plate because it has so much movement. There it was again, but it'll miss. Well, I can see why they're going to it. It has nasty break. Well, seven run lead, you probably just challenge him here. They do, but it ends up hitting him. That ball was almost a strike. Yeah. Tailing back over the plate, but Jerry Key Nichols will reach base for the first time. Yeah, he almost want to say he started his swing. Yeah. Want to challenge that if it wasn't a seven nothing ball. Game. Not that they're out of it. We've seen crazy, stranger things happen in the game of baseball. But well, Jacob Runnels will now hit. Runnels one for two tonight. Three for eleven on the season. As that slider misses again. He's got the Chris Sabo sunglasses on. I don't think many people younger than me will know that reference. <laughs> Sparky Anderson, his manager, used to call him Spuds McKenzie because oh, okay. of the glasses. Nice. Yeah. And that doesn't really happen anymore. Everybody's got their contacts, afraid to wear the rec specs like Kurt Rambis did back in the day. 2 1 pitch. I guess Kareem sported those for a little bit as well, didn't he? Many years. Well, Jones falling behind here. Got to throw some strikes. Gators up 7 nothing. And that one popped up. Probably playable for Caglione. He'll try to find the wall and does, but it hits off the net just before it gets into his glove. Yeah, Kareem started wearing those glasses. Because he, his injury kept getting poked in the eye and, and had a lot of eye injuries, like scratch retinas and whatnot. Finally, he says, put some glasses on you. That'll take care of that. Three two pitch, and that one is smacked out into the gap in left center field. It's down. Robertson will pick it up. And they're going to hold Nichols, but Runnels goes down and gets one. He's got his second hit of the night, and the Ospreys a really good opportunity here to get their first run of the last couple of days. Just challenge him fastball and sitting on it. Kevin O'Sullivan out to the mound, and that's going to do it. Jones will put the baseball in Sully's hand and a new arm will come in for Florida. So we'll tell you about Blake Purnell when we come back here on the SEC Network. Let the movement take over 88 to 89 on the fastball and they actually like him lower than that because that's where we'll get the movement. Good first pitch fastball to Kate Bush. And that one was at 88. Gators, of course, playing the infield back. 
up seven runs. But Brunel keeping it at the knees again at 88 for strike two. Kate Bush played at Palm Beach Gardens High School, and the coach there is Joe Russo, who played on Joe Arnold's team in the 90s. Third baseman. Good fastball again by Purnell. So there's one. Three consecutive fastballs down at the knees, and Bush will head back to the dugout, retired for the first time tonight. And you can see that, that ball, the bottom falls out when he takes a little off he gets more movement which is going to be a lot harder to hit and square up. Well Matthew Clements will now hit and he'll take one at the knees for a strike and you can see the location is so good it's down and you're seeing Garrison actually move the, the glove up to try to get the call which he's been able to do at least on that pitch. Grounder to second Curlin will handle it but the Ospreys are going to get their first run as Clements with the RBI ground out. Makes it a seven to one game. And that run, of course, charged to Hunter Jones. And now Tyler Gerdeson with two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. That ball is smacked down the left field line and fair. So the Ospreys are going to get another one as Gerdeson just took one the other way. He's got himself a double, and he's pumped, giving his team a couple of runs here in the inning. Does a nice job staying back on it inside out. It's the pitch that's tailing away. Gets it right down the line. You see where his head is on contact. That shows you a hitter that's staying on a pitch the whole way. And when you do that, voila, oppo double. And now Drew Leinenbach. First pitch hacking. Right. Leinenbach was the leadoff hitter yesterday. Down in the eight hole today, he has struck out and he tried to bunt his way on and got thrown out. But he's going to go the other way, and that ball is going to fall. Evans will field it, throw all the way to the plate, but it's not going to be in time. And a three shot here for the Ospreys as the seven and eight hole hitters go back to back base hits. And there's no quit in the boys from North Florida. Yeah, they've really battled back in a game that looked like it was going to be. Counting down the outs and see if the Gators can 10 run rule them again. But this little uprising here has turned this into a ball game. And now Alex Rodriguez in the nine hole. First pitch slider is a good one for strike one. Yeah, Joe Mercadante's ball club showing a lot of fight. I would expect nothing less from Joe's clubs. Back to back breaking balls and Rodriguez in an 0 2 hole. Yeah, Mercadante co has come in with a plan, getting the job at, at North Florida, taking over for, for TP, and you know, certainly has some work to do as this one's fouled back. But you've, again, you've got a, a great staff, a lot of uh, history. Tyler Hold, a big leaguer. They're over a third, so they know what it takes to win. They just, they've got to get the right dudes, and have already done some great improvements to the stadium. We were able to see yesterday. 0-2 is off the plate. I mean, we're so happy for Joe being a Gator player, getting the job. But you know, the circumstances that led to it, it just still yeah, breaks your heart tough. with Tim Perrington passing away. There you saw Tyler Holt there, coaching third. One two is a swing and a miss. Yeah, we'll talk more about TP as the Gators honored him before the game as well. So big strikeout for Blake Purnell. He gets a slider. Occasional changeup. Tops out at 91 92. And he gets to face Jack Caglione. Dennis has appeared in one game, went two innings with three strikeouts. So he was very effective on opening weekend. 
Breaking ball to Cags airs pops straight behind home plate. And about 10 rows in, it'll bounce all the way up to the second deck. And just below us, the fans got a souvenir. Great shot there by Ron Bates, the cameraman, Good just day. to our right. Look at Ron all over it. Ron, just make sure when one comes back here in the booth, you fling it over here and get Belmonte <laughs> catching it. I'm talking to Ron before the game about how hard it is in golf for the cameraman oh, yeah. to get a golf ball. That was just as hard what Ron just did. Heck yeah, followed it he, perfectly. Ron takes a backseat to no one. There's the camera. You can't see Ron. He's tries to be incognito. That's him. He's over there, our guy. One two is down in the dirt. Cags tonight, an RBI single in three at bats. He is the only Gator to have multiple hits in the first two games. So trying to do that again if he can get another hit here. Four RBI yesterday for Jack. And the one today. 2-2 pitch is strike three called. Good fastball down and in. And that froze Caglione, who will strike out for the first time tonight. Yeah, it rode in and worked its way back. A little two seam action right there. Good pitch. So now Luke Kamen. He'll take a fast strike at 93 miles an hour. So the hardest thrower so far for the Ospreys. Heyman has walked a couple of times tonight. The question for you, okay, you're, you're the freshman pitcher out there and you get a guy like Cags, nationally known hitter, yep. you strike him out. Would you rather get him like that or a swing in this? Like that. Like, I think so. You, yeah. you kind of fool them? Yeah, okay. Not every pitcher would have answered it that way, I don't think, right? Yeah. But but some, some a, would like I was a soft thrower with location. Okay. So. All right. It was more of the crafty. Some people, some pitchers, uh, I like to blow it yeah, by. Him. Blow it by. Him. Yeah, he couldn't catch up to my heat. <laughs> Ooh, that fastball just missed. Right, I have another question. All right, so, and, and you've coached and you've taken pitchers out of the game. Do yeah. you have your guy that you're taking out stay till the reliever shows up, or does he leave early? Which guy are you? Because I had my preference when I managed in the minors. Okay, no, that's a good question. Ah. Yeah. Here's a 2-2 pitch and strike three again. So how about the freshman? He has sent down Caglione and Heyman. A couple of all SECers back looking. So I don't think Joe Mercadante is going to go take him out anytime soon. Backup slider. And backup sliders are not intentional. And that's why they fool hitters. Because they have the spin that is going away. And then they back up and you've given up on it. Yeah, I, I think my answer would be I'd be fine with letting the kid go back. And that's probably the wrong answer. Oh, go early. Yeah. Till the guy came out. That, okay. So that way he's not sitting there and it's not awkward and I'm not mad at him as a coach because he stunk and yelling and screaming. <laughs> well, I'd always, just say, he, go get out of here. They don't always have to stunk. <laughs> you guy could go eight no, and a third. Oh, of course. <laughs> well, if, if that's the case, still let him leave early so he can get his uh, curtain call. Yeah, he's going to get it either way. But I know that would not be your answer, probably, right? You are correct. And, and what's the mindset of that? Just to, to make him give him the baseball? Not not so necessarily give him the baseball, but because that wasn't like that, that wasn't necessarily the thing. It was maybe uh, I just thought it was kind of a, a respect thing and, sure. and have him say something to the guy coming in because they're, they're teammates, you know. Maybe yeah. an encouraging word from a. A, a teammate before he leaves, you know, something like that. That was, and if you're pitching staffs, that good pitching staffs are close yeah, like that. Sure. So they, they probably wouldn't mind saying something to the guy that's coming in for them. Two two to Shelton is fouled off. Now you've seen videos of games in the big leagues where a pitcher trying to leave early and the manager grabs a guy and pulls, pulls him back on the mound. Yeah, sure. you could. YouTube those so I mean so some guys are you know real sticklers about that yeah I mean and I'd be fine doing it the other way I just 
I guess it's not really a preference. 2 2 is down in the dirt. This kid hitting Shelton, he's going to be fun to watch this year. So he said that he he hit, I guess, in preseason, one of the longest home runs he's ever, if not the longest home run he's ever seen hit in this ballpark. Wow. And he's on the same team with Kags. He lost him. So after a couple of strikeouts, uh -oh. the freshman with a two out walk, and that's going to keep the inning going for Sheldon. Sheldon's had a good night. Been on base all three times. A couple of walks. And a two RBI single. And Sheldon, not, not a guy you could fall asleep on. Home run power. And he has good home run pull power. I think that's about the only place you're going to hit one out tonight. Unless you really. Not sure of this here. Dennis throwing it as hard to first as he is to the plate. Really worried about Shelton. He's got a guy up here that can hit a home run. I'd, I'd worry with two outs, get the hitter. And Shelton does not really have a big lead at all. That one stays inside. So Shelton now with three hits. And five at bats in the two games against the Ospreys. How many times do you see a pitcher throw over to first unnecessarily, then throw it away? You know, and Sheldon has got the, the tough task, and he was in the lineup of a majority of, of the games last year, over 50 of them. But you know, he's out there where Wyatt Langford was, and certainly you can't expect him to, to put up the numbers, but this is a guy that should give you double digit home runs mm -hmm. be in the 50s and 60s and, and runs driven in and again I think you're you're not asking him to put up Langford numbers but if all those guys collectively like he Dale Thomas Ty Evans with of course Shelton and Cags can put up those numbers and Robertson hits better than he did a year ago then that, that offense can still be pretty good. I, I think there's at least seven guys in this lineup that could go double digit home runs this year. Shelton got jammed on that breaking ball. Leinenbach will try to run it down, but it'll be the left fielder, Gerdeson, cutting in front of him. And that will retire the side. So a couple of zeros by the UNF pitching staff. Ballpark digest. How about that? <laughs> Nothing better than that. The, the, the publication that just talks about ballpark. Actually, they have a lot of things in there. It's kind of a, f a fun uh, website, Ballpark Digest. Well, there you see the, the concourse and the ability to be at the concession stand, still watch the games modeled after, of course, TD Ameritrade there in Omaha. Good breaking ball there by Blake Purnell. He's facing the leadoff hitter, so top three in the order. We'll see if he can hang a zero after the Ospreys just put up three, and that's a good way to start it as a swing and a miss by McKinley sends him down for the second time tonight. This is the location that had him just fooling all kind of hitters his freshman year. Now Jabin Bates. 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. He'll try to slap one the other way. And then the unique berm area. And there's same camo kid with his second baseball tonight. How about that? He's going to be popular in school tomorrow. Caught his limit, though. There are two, two foul ball limit here? I would think so. OK. Remember the days where you had to bring him to the concession stand for a soda? Now, you can see Bates up there. You know he's not cold. From Michigan. Lansing, to be exact. Yeah, one of the few non Floridians here's a slow roller to Thomas the bare hand play is not going to be in time wow. and despite Bates being a catcher he showed some wheels right there for an infield base hit 
The late great Tim McCarver would be mad at you because he hated when you say runs well for a catcher. I know. <laughs> I mean, that's all Thomas could do. And on the back end, great job by Cags. Bang, bang, play. That's the, the funny part about baseball. You could hit a ball really hard right at somebody, and you can do that. And one will give you a hit, and one won't. And not the one you would expect. They say they all leave it out in the wash. I mean, that's what I was always yeah, told. That's probably right. But it's just it's so frustrating as a pitcher because you feel like you make a really good pitch, and then there's nothing you can do about it. But if you actually think about it and you look at the field right now, as this one is a strike at the knees, there's a lot more green grass out there than – there are people, so it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but on the other side, you make a bad pitch, they square it up, and guy lines into a double play. Sure. So you got that too. Yeah. But it is fascinating, and I know all the, the fences are different, but of course the bases and the infield dimensions are always the same to be able to come up with what 60 feet, 6 inches was. As this one's low, and of course, 90 feet for the bases. Mm -hmm. You know, I think even in the NBA, we've evolved when it was 10 foot baskets. It's almost like it should be 12 foot baskets now, with as big as these guys are. But then, of course, that messes up the shooting. And 3 1 is in there for a strike. Well, it's like they're doing in baseball right now, making the bases bigger in the big league. So, yeah. technically, it's. You know, from first to second, it's shorter. Second to third, it's shorter. It so just it's easier is. to steal. Well, yeah, the bases are closer. 3 2 pitch is off the plate. And uh oh. Purnell flirting with some danger here is now you've got the cleanup man coming to the plate as Kevin O'Sullivan comes out to the mound. If you really want to get it intriguing, the potential tie run comes to the on deck circle. Yeah. Brian Slater in the bullpen for the Gators. And it looks like we might see him in the game as Kevin O'Sullivan is. Righties and lefties and had a good outing against the uh, St. John's Red Storm on Friday night. He went three and a third innings, four hits, only gave up a run, struck out four. They'll but, face Jacob Runnels who yeah. doubled into the left center field gap his last time up. Good hitter, but he pops one straight up here. Curling out into shallow right field, but they're going to call infield fly, so he could drop it, but catches it anyway for out number two, and that's a big, big out right there for Ryan Slater. Yeah, because the guy that's coming up now with home run power cannot tie this ball game. The first thing is number 11, Katie Bush. It is the Florida State transfer, Cade Bush, 230 pound right handed hitter. A single, a walk, and a strikeout today as he fouls that one straight back. Slater came in after Cade Fisher, the Friday night starter for the Gators, was not effective. Fisher. Only went two innings, giving up five hits and five earned runs. I bet you he's chomping at the bit to get back on the mound. We'll see him what Friday night. Yep. So we here a couple nights. Still have not seen Brandon Neely, the Gator closer yet. And it may, we may get an inning out of him tonight. Yep. I would think. One one slider is good for strike two. Yeah, that rain out just changed the dynamic of that first weekend. A lot of people you needed to see, you didn't get to see them. I don't remember an opening weekend like that. That one's lined in the left field for a base hit. Looks like he tried to throw a change up in there, and he hung it right out over the middle part of the plate. So Bates will come in to score, and Bush has his second hit of the night, and all of a sudden, the tying run's going to come to home plate for the Ospreys. Yeah, well, right on right change, but the location was up. And Cade Bush equal to the task. So Matthew Clements now. 
with an opportunity but he'll pop the first pitch up foul territory Jack Caglione will drift over and haul it in to retire the side so a single a walk and then freshman for UNF has been very good Brett Dennis with a 92 mile an hour fastball just misses below the knees to Dale Thomas said three ground balls tonight all to the left side of the infield all into the shift and he has not been able to get any by those guys as this one misses outside for ball two and think about what Dennis has done Caglione got him looking Heyman got him looking walked Shelton and got uh, shown at the fly out then the fly out to Evan so it's a veteran guys he's getting out here good fastball there Thomas was not ready for a 2 0 fastball right down the middle. Lays off of a slider there, and he's got the advantage in the count. Gators would love to uh, get some tack on runs here. And I'm thinking Brandon Neely late in this ball game, we will see in his season debut. Thomas fouls that one straight back. I mean, right out of this shoot, Sully, I sure loves the way he's got his back end set up with, with a Slater yep. followed by a Neely. I mean, that's that's exactly how you want to have it. Have that kind of talent on the back end. That one misses and Thomas will reach base for the first time tonight. Because Sully loved to set it up. You know the way it was in 2017 one of the best closers yeah, Michael Byrne. have ever seen and Michael Byrne and get you two sometimes even three innings on the back end well Neely could get you that well and I certainly think that that's part of the thinking and and having a Neely on the back end sure. as much as he Absolutely. probably wanted to start to be where this program needs to be Neely can be that guy on the back end and, and throw a couple of times on the weekend. And we've seen this through the years. Coastal Carolina, the year they won yeah. it, they they had a back end guy that gave them multiple innings. Gary Gilmer, the coach, would use. Tanner Garrison, the hitter, and he'll roll one white to short. Rodriguez has it, flips it to McKinley, but the throw is wide. And that will prevent the double play. But they'll get the lead out, and now two outs in the inning for the nine-hole hitter, Michael Robertson. Overthrow. Guy likes to pitch backwards, start you off off speed. And look, he's got a big out right here to get because he doesn't get Robertson, then it turns over. This thing can escalate in a hurry, even though there's two outs. But a great job by uh, Brett Dennis. Pretty impressive outing. Robertson's had a good night. Couple of singles. Did strike out, though, his last time up. His singles have both been the other way against the shift. And the Ospreys will shift again. And Robertson tries to go that way, but fouls it off for strike one and to make it I guess even worse or at least better for the hitter the third baseman is basically standing on the third base bag yeah I mean, so there's even more room to the left side there could there, yeah without question normally if you're going to shift like that you would take that third baseman and back Be him up but then that would also well, then allow Robertson to maybe bunt Fisher says, I'll just handle him myself. Getting ahead, no balls and two strikes. And that's the only reason he's near the bag, just to take the bun away. Good change up. Robertson spoiled it, though. That's one of the keys to hitting 300. Break up nasty two strike pitches. Stay alive till they make a mistake. Right. 
Really no lead at all at first for Tanner Garrison. Fisher's 0-2 is up and in. Gators have won 14 of the last 15 in this series. And the one two is hit the other way again. Robertson's ball is down. And that one's going to get all the way to the wall. Garrison round in third, heading for home. He's a brown eyed, handsome man. And a three hit night on an opposite field double for Michael Robertson gives the Gators now an eight to four lead. So you're playing me to pull, huh? <laughs> okay. I just hit another of my three hits to the left side of second base. And with his speed, he glides into second base. Garrison scoring, and that's a big run because the Gators had not scored since the fourth and saw North Florida get within three. So Robertson and his speed now in scoring position for Curlin, who takes a breaking ball for a strike. Curlin an RBI single back in the fourth. Hitting 385 on the young season after hitting 297 a year ago. That one's a little high. Curlin pulls that one hard foul. And he's in a one two hole. That went out towards third, gobbled up by Clements, and his throw is in plenty of time to retire the side. But another walk in the inning. And it helps the Gators get another run on Michael Robertson's Gerdeson with an RBI double back in the six. Evans has had a good day. Shell not a good day. The Gators have been good getting two out RBI base hits tonight. Eight runs on eight hits for them. The Ospreys out hitting Florida, though. They've got nine. As they will send up the bottom three in the order, including that guy we just mentioned and Tyler Gerdeson. Fouls one to the screen. Yeah, the Ospreys only managed two hits last night in the seven inning, 10 run ruled game. Good change up there from Slater. Something that he's really worked hard on. And then back to the Slater slider. And he'll get a big first out here to the top of the eighth with a strikeout. Nasty back foot. That back foot slider with such depth on it. Hard pitch to hit. That one not as good. High to Leinenbach, who's got an RBI single tonight. That one a fly ball to the new right fielder. It's Michael Robertson. He moved over as Jalen Guy has entered the game. So Ty Evans' night is over. And you probably see a lot of that this year for defensive purposes. Robertson's been working out and right, and there you see Jalen Guy, the transfer from Liberty. He got the start in the opener on Friday night. Good fastball for strike one to the nine hole hitter, Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez, a single in three trips, also walked and struck out. Slater feeling it now. He's working quickly. And he's one pitch away from retiring the side. And he's going to get it. Slater slider down in the dirt. And just like that, a couple of strikeouts and a quick one, two, three. Aglione steps to the dish for the fifth time tonight. Takes a first pitch change up down in the dirt. Cags an RBI single back in the second. But that's been it. The Ospreys have held him in check tonight. 
as he swings through another off speed pitch to even up the count at one and one. Cags with two hits in each of the first two games. Just the one tonight. As he takes that one high. Big wide stance. Lays off another changeup. And this is something that he's going to have to adjust to. Two one off speeds. Pitching him backwards is something that's going to be the norm, I would think. So he takes up just about the entire batter's box with that big frame. Man, that one's not even close. So a leadoff walk as Fisher wanted nothing to do with Caglione. And that's how the Gators get started here in the bottom of the eighth. Like I said, you're going to see Cags walk a lot more this year than he did a year ago because they're just going to pitch around him as much as they can. And that's one of the reasons why you're going to bat, bat him second because you don't necessarily want to walk the two guys, sure. get to the three, four. So see how it all works out. But Cags doing his part, not chasing. Heyman's already walked a couple of times tonight. He'll take a slider for a strike there. And you know who got better as last year and not chasing here a couple of years ago was Fabian. Yep. Jeff Fabian really did a nice job not chasing after pitches after he got behind in the count. Shift is on for Heyman. Takes that fastball up in the zone. Hitless tonight. Heyman has three hits through the first two games. He'll foul that one off. Gators have been really, really good in the midweek, and that's the reason why they won 54 games a year ago. Last year, the Gators were 11 and two in midweek games. As Heyman fouls one off again, the, the win last night, going back to last year, is a 10-game winning streak in midweek games. And when you think about what the Gators were able to do last year against teams that were non-SEC teams, right. that was really, really important. As Heyman can't check his swing on that one, he goes down in the dirt and strikes out for the second consecutive at bat. And you're talking about keeping your focus on a midweek game, especially when you get into the SEC schedule. You know, look at this nice pitch, breaking ball buried. Just couldn't hold his swing as Heyman last night. Mississippi State loses to Austin P, three yeah. to two. Vandy loses to Dayton, eight to four. Yeah. Here's Shelton, squares the bunt, and going against the shift, he's going to be rewarded with a base hit. So hitless tonight, in fact, a night that he would like to forget, he's finally able to get on base. Take what they give you, and they gave. Just get it on the ground anywhere you got it beat. So here's Shelnut. Saw Anthony Rizzo do that every now and then. Did it a little more with the Cubs. Shona hitting 375 on the young season. Takes a breaking ball down low. But you're getting back to, to the non-SEC games. Gators played 25 regular season non-conference games a year ago. And they were 22 and 3. So they took care of the games that they needed to because you know when you get to the SEC how much of a grind that's yeah. going to be. Pitching coach out to the mound again and certainly the way that things have started it appears that the SEC is going to be the best league out there anyway with all the teams that are ranked in the, the top 25. I mean, you've got Arkansas at two LSU at three. Gators at four, Vandy at six, 
A&M at eight, Tennessee at nine. So six of the top nine are from the SEC. Then you still got Alabama, South Carolina in there, and Kentucky receiving votes. Now the umpire is going to get together and chat about something. Maybe the, the amount of visits, making sure that all is still good there, and it appears that it is. Yeah, Wake Forest lost last night. Also in a midweek game. That's tough to win in college baseball these days. That one down in the dirt to Shelnut, but not far enough away for the runners to advance. And last year, the Gators lost it to uh, South Florida. And a loss to Jacksonville here. Yeah. Shelnut right off the end of the bat finds the hole into right field. One run will easily score as Cags will step on home plate and a capper gives the Gators their ninth run of the game and Shelnut his third RBI of the night. So the shift these last couple of innings have really hurt the Ospreys defensively. The Gators doing a good job. Robertson an inning ago with a double against the shift and now Shelnut goes the other way where nobody was. Jeff calls that a capper because it hits the cap end of the aluminum bat. And usually puts a slice in the ball, which they just threw out of the game. Hey, 87 hopper against the shift. I'll take it every day. Yeah. Line drive in the box score. Hey. That's what Sean that will tell you. Absolutely. Now Jalen Guy will get his first at bat of the series. Home and home last night and tonight. Gators trying to get double digit runs for the second consecutive day. Guy started the opener on Friday night, the loss to St. John's. He was 0 for 2, did have an RBI, sack fly. But trying to get his first Gator hit here and get Shelton in from third. Gators out hitting the Ospreys now. And with 10 hits, Florida has double digit hits in all three games so far in the young season. Swing and a miss on that good breaking ball. Richard played last season at Liberty. Definitely a go get him center fielder. He squares to bunt and will pull it back. Yeah, he's a guy that has played a lot of college baseball. He's made 179 starts in college so far. So he's seen a bunch. Runner goes, swing and a miss, and that ball is going to get away from the catcher Bates. So I will swipe a second for Tyler Shelnut. And the Gators have their second stolen base of the night. Sean had picked a good pitch to go on. His first stolen base is a Gator. How about that. Oh, for one a year ago. Long conversation between the Ospay battery and the home plate umpire. John Bennett about to break it up. With only three outs left for UNF, they have to find a way to, to, to get out of this inning and not allowing any more runs. It's already slam proof. With a five run lead. One out in the inning. Ospreys will bring 
corner infielders even with the bag. And the 2 2 pitch to Guy is fisted right above our heads. And you know, Jeff, it's almost to the point where you almost might have to play in. Yeah. Because you just, you got to roll the dice here, right? And that's what they're going to do. Oh, there we go. And you, you just, you put yourself in this position, you have, this is all you're left to do. So Guy just has to get one to the outfield, and he's battling here. He had 309 last year, a couple of homers, drove in 25 as he awaits the 2 2, and that one is down low for ball three. First base is open, but Dale Thomas lurking on deck. Here's a 3 2, and that plunked him. So he threw him a changeup, wasn't going to give in with first base open, and now the bags are full of blue jerseys with still only one out. Watch this changeup right up and in on him. Nowhere to go but to get hit. So Thomas will try to get his first RBI of the young season. Bags full of Gators. And the first pitch is almost to the backstop. Dale walked his last time. He's hit three ground balls tonight, all the left side of the infield. But with the bases loaded, they don't put the shift on. So he's got more room to try to do some damage. 1-0 pitch is down low again. And right now, Dale Thomas, just look for a pitch you could drive. You're hitting the count. Don't give in anything off speed if you're not sitting on it. Dale having a little conversation with himself as he gets back into the box. And he lays off another one. I wouldn't be surprised if they greenlit him here. <laughs> they don't, and Dale's upset. He wanted to hit. Instead, he'll get the first RBI of 2024. The easy way, and he'll trot down to first with a bases loaded walk. Now a long one could send us all home, but first we'll have a change. The long one here would end it. Garrison getting his first start tonight. He's got himself a double as he takes a breaking ball there. Looking for his first Gator RBI. Gets a fastball and smokes one. Line drive out to left. It'll be caught by Gerdeson. Deep enough to score Shellnut on the sack fly. So nice job by Garrison. He'll get his first Gator RBI. And 11 runs now on the scoreboard for the Orange and Blue. And Michael Robertson will come to the plate. Trying to get his fourth hit of the night. Whippleberg did not play at St. John's River, but not last year. He's a red shirt junior. They red shirted him. Ross Jones, the coach at St. John's River, took his team to, I think, the D2 Junior, Co junior College World Series last year. Yeah. Robertson has had a really good night, and he'll lay off a changeup for strike one. Three hits already for Robertson. That ties his career high. He did that once last year against South Florida in February. And all of his hits have been the other ways. Done a good job of going against the shift and 
despite the three hits to left field. The Ospreys still shift. He's down in the count 0 2 and goes the other way again. A career high four hits. Guile step on the bag at third. He will score. Dale Thomas chugging along. There's going to be a play at the plate. No, it's dropped on the relay, and he will score. So how about Michael Robertson? Two doubles, two singles, three RBI, and a big reason why the Gators have 13 runs now on the scoreboard. And, of course, a stolen base. Yeah. Yeah, Robertson, what a night. And, again, they're playing him the pull. Yeah. They pitch him away, and the broken record, he goes with it. Great piece of hitting. Gets his hands on top of that pitch and drives it down the line. So a career high in hits, career high in runs driven in in a game tonight. And the best offensive night of Michael Robertson's career. And he represents the 10 run rule out there at second base. If yep, Kate Curlin can bring him in, the Gators will walk it off here in the eighth inning. Curlin digs in. He takes a change up for strike two. So Kate quickly in an 0-2 hole after he thought he had four hits last night. It got changed to three later in the game. He's only got one tonight as that one misses off the plate. Curlin ready for the one two and that breaking ball fouled off. You know we were talking about coach Tim Periton who was an assistant under Pat McMahon who passed away. I mean it, it was heartbreaking for us to hear that TP sure. You know, God bless. I, it, it's just so sad what happened. What a great great guy and a great coach. We sorely missed. One two pitch misses. Yeah battled cancer for a really long time. Long time. And only long ended time. up missing one game. Yeah. Over at UNF, who always wanted to be there, do whatever he could to be with his guys. 2 2 pitch off the plate, and great job last night by Joe Mercadante. The rest of that staff, his wife got to throw out yeah. first pitch last night over in Jacksonville. A bunch of friends and family on the field. Moment of silence tonight by the Gators yeah, here great. at the Condren Ballpark. Yeah, class move here tonight. 3 2 to Curlin, fisted right off the end of the bat. And that'll roll out to second and roll over to first to end the inning. So the Gators send nine to the plate but fall one short. Some work for the first time in 2024. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the best closures in all of college baseball. Fastball, mid-90s, slider, change. And a guy that can give you multiple innings. Look at the numbers from a year ago. And one would think the saves total this year will be even higher than that. Yeah SEC leading 13 saves and 14 chances a year ago. He'll face the top of the order and a 93 mile an hour fastball is in there for strike one to trip McKinley. 0 for 4 tonight with a couple of strikeouts. Neely with the off speed pitch it's grounded to Shelton and a perfect dart over to Caglione for out number one. And Jeff and I were talking between innings. I said, I bet you Sully's happy it wasn't a 10 run roll because they needed to get Neely into a ball game. Had he not gotten in tonight, he would not even had another chance to see a game till Friday, eight days into the season yeah. for your closer. So I bet you Sully's pretty happy. It's a nine run lead instead of uh, keeping Neely out of the game. Jabin Bates comes in hacking, but he fouls off the first one. You think about the, the saves for Neely last year. He had five more than the next closest SEC guy. He was six nationally in saves as this one is fouled straight back. All SEC first team, second team All-American a year ago. And his mentality on the mound is what you want your closer to be. And, and it's also a mentality that Hey, if you do blow a save, you come back out, shrug it off, and go get him. But it, it doesn't happen that often to this guy. Now the one, two, and see ya. 95 up under the chin for Neely's first strikeout of the year. I'll tell you, you know, for a better part of this game, what we've seen is 
North Florida hanging in there. You can see the fastball over the hand, just overmatching him. It's kind of typical of a North Florida ball club hanging in and battling all the way to the end. You know, Dusty Rhodes, the guy that started the program, was an assistant here at the University of Florida. Yep. And he'll be back. I think Mississippi State Series are honoring the, the 80s decade. Dusty will be here, I'm told. Great slider. Yeah, a lot of uh, great guys from that decade. First time the Gators made the College World Series in the late 80s. Neely's 1 1 to Cherokee Nichols is high. You know, UNF has had, what, five big leaguers. Their first guy, Sid Roberson, in 95 with the Brewers, actually managed against him in the minor leagues. He was a pitcher for the Brewers organization. It was a tough one, a little lefty. And Todd Dunn, Mike Wood, Brian Baker, who's with the Orioles now and Frank Herman Red Sox spring training invitee had a cup of coffee last year. Those are Ospreys in the bigs. Neely's 3-1 caught the inside part of the plate and now the Gators one pitch away from winning and they'll get it. Neely gets a strikeout on the 94 mile an hour fastball and works a perfect ninth here to seal the deal on another win for Florida. So the Gators win yesterday in Jacksonville, today in Gainesville, and now it'll be a five-game week with Columbia coming to town this weekend. But, Nick, they took care of business. It's second night in a row. It's always got to be happy what he's seen tonight.